Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Broaden the scope of exposure for your business by going beyond the interview. Learn more at www.jmmbmediallc.com or email us at jmmbradio at gmail.com. I'd rather regret the risk that didn't work than the chances I didn't take at all. Simone Biles. Today, we welcome Jamie Middleman. Jamie has a background in media, having managed a $30 million media portfolio on behalf of the conglomerate of Yahoo, the Huffington Post, AOL, and Verizon. Her passion for sport, diversity, and inclusion inspired her to found Flame Bearers, the first global storytelling platform celebrating the stories of women Olympians and Paralympians. Flame Bearers brings these champion stories to life via podcast, video, and live events. This organization has reached in 48 countries and recently received four Signal Awards in the categories of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and public service and activism. Jamie has provided inspiration to people to drive change for themselves in their connection with others and their communities. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you. Wow. You are amazing. <laughs> well, thank you. But I think it's more uh, the women I get to work with are the awesome ones. I just hope I can give them the credit they deserve. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about Flame uh, Bearers. Sure. So I founded Flame Bears three years ago when I was a grad student at the Harvard Kennedy School. And our mission is to illuminate the voices of resilient women athletes who are changing the world. And we believe that this is really important because less than 4% of sports media coverage in the U.S. goes to women athletes, which is just crazy. And then pretty much all of that, that measly 4% goes to able-bodied athletes, athletes who are white, athletes who identify a certain ways sexually, religiously, uh, pretty much and if, if you fall outside of the quote unquote norm in any of these ways, it's hard to get coverage, let alone coverage that doesn't really paint you with the pity brush. So essentially not in a empowering way that you would like to see yourself portrayed. So we wanted to change that narrative and three years running, we have worked with athletes from every continent. Um, and really we want to become the preeminent storytelling platform for elite women athletes, because we want to make sure that girls and women from all corners of the world have role models that they can look up to who look and sound like them. And we let the athletes do the talking. We just give them the stage and, and bring the experts to back up whatever it is that they talk about. Okay. That is, that is awesome. That is awesome. And you're right. You know, like this year, I was watching some of the basketball uh and the women brought in more views than the men did. Yep. I mean, it was like over the top for the women. Totally. So why do you think this happens with uh, women athletes? I, th I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, so I, I think the first one is that um, historically, um, it, it takes a while for women to get into sports. So with Title IX happening 50 years ago, it takes a while for, for women to actually get in sports. And then more importantly, for the fan base to develop. Um, I've spoken with a number of people who talked about how long it takes for a fan base to actually grow to support teams. And you're looking at the rate of growth of women's sports. Women's sports are growing faster than the early days of, of Major League Baseball or professional football did. So it just takes time. And the reason for that is because I'm a Red Sox fan because my parents took me to Red Sox games when I was little. So if your parents instill a value or a team in you when you're, you're a kid, you're probably going to support them. So we now have women who grew up playing sports because of Title IX, and I think they are taking their sons and daughters to women's sports games. But guess what? 
they themselves weren't probably brought to women's sports games when they were little. Mm -hmm. So they may not have necessarily been fans themselves. But if the kids go to games early, I think they're going to grow up being diehard women's sports fans. And it just takes time to build that emotional connection with teams and players. Mm. Yes. Yes, I agree. I agree. And the more that we step out and women are stepping out in groves, <laughs> to say the least, and, you know, they're going to have to, the recognition is just going to come because we're not skipping anything uh, in terms of what we can do. We've shown, we're showing the world that we can do anything we put our minds to, period. Full stop. Completely agree. So tell us a little bit about some of the athletes that you featured. Sure. Um, this is always one of the hardest questions because I feel like these are all, I literally consider the work kind of love notes to my, to these athletes. I, I, they're all kind of my unborn children, if you will, um, because I really pour my heart and soul in, into this work. Um, I will give you two examples. The first one is our, our latest podcast episode with Masuma Alizada of Afghanistan. She competed in the Tokyo Olympics and she was the first female cyclist from Afghanistan to ever go to the Olympics. Wow. And what was so incredible about Masuma is besides the fact that you know she grew up having to leave her country her country move to iran she talks about what it was like learning how to cycle and having to dress up as a man and then when people in cars drove by her realized she was a female them hitting her throwing stuff at her mm. and what was so incredible about working with Masuma is she really views her participation in the Olympics and her um, riding as not for herself, but really as a way to spread hope for all women in Afghanistan. So she sees herself as a beacon or a symbol for women who are at home under Taliban rule, who are not able to, who are no longer allowed to go to school, who are no longer allowed to. Um, work. And she really takes on that responsibility very seriously. So that was a very inspiring episode for me to work on. Um, our next episode would be a follow-up with Nikki Nieves, who is a Paralympic gold medalist on Team USA sitting volleyball. So Nikki um, does not have one arm. And what I love about Nikki's story is in her first episode, she focused on her identity as an Afro-Latina and the Black Lives Matter movement. Nikki was diagnosed with COVID three days before the Paralympics. She was on the team, she was supposed to go, and she's really real about what that was like for her. And frankly, to watch her team go and win the gold medal, and she was not able to be there because she had COVID. Um, and I can't even imagine what that was like, let alone her ability to share that with us. But it was really humbling to be able to, to elevate that experience for her. Wow. Wow. That is amazing what you're doing. Well, I am, thank you. <laughs> I am honored to know you. <laughs> well, on, honestly, I, I think in, in the very beginning and, and still now, I still have to kind of pinch myself when, I, when I'm speaking with these women because they're the ones who are doing the really hard work. And given my background and, and the skills that I have, I think the least that I can do is to help them share all the incredible things that they've done with, with people who want to know their stories because they're doing the real hard work. And I'm just, I'm just giving them the mic. Yes. Wow. Rufa, you want to add something? No, I'm just listening and I'm thinking how important this work is that you're doing. And it's, you know, it's not just for the time, it's for future generations. Yes. All these young girls who are going to be, even if they don't go into sports, they're still going to be inspired by these stories. And the bottom line is, like you said, with, I can't pronounce her name, but from Afghanistan, 
I uh, know that what you do is not just for yourself. It can be for, it can inspire and encourage and strengthen so many other young girls and young women. And the fact that we live in a global um, world, so to speak now, um, we're internationally connected. These stories travel around the world. Yes. So even though she's cycling for the people, for the women in Afghanistan, she's cycling for the women in the United States. She's cycling for those immigrants in Mexico who are trying to make a better life for themselves and sometimes not making it across the border to safety. She's cycling for everybody. Yes. You know, the other one, Nikki, someone who has only one arm, it's the same thing. My goodness, is saying we can do anything. Don't let your limitations be your outlook on life. You know, the limitations that you have physically or the limitations that people impose on you. I think this is, a, it, it's just a powerful work. And um, thank, thank you for coming here and sharing this with us. Yes, thank you so much. So your podcast, if people want to listen to your podcast, how do they do so? Totally. <clears throat> So um, our website is flamebears.com. So that is flame bears, as in the bears are people who carry the flame. You can also find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. So we're on all the listening platforms. We're also on all the social media sites. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, so we, we do post a lot of videos and kind of behind the scenes content there too. So if you want to engage with the athlete beyond just listening to our podcasts, those can be pretty cool to check out too. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So your team, okay, I'm sure you have a big team uh, doing this. Tell us a little bit about how your team um, works to make this happen. Sure. So to be completely honest, it's changing every day because we're growing pretty quickly, uh, which is really exciting, yet also daunting at the same time. Um, started off as, as just a team of one and, and you're looking at it, um, <laughs> but, but every day we have more people joining on, which is an incredible help and I'm, I'm so appreciative. So, so right now um, I have four teammates um, and everyone is kind of managing a different area. Um, I have one teammate, Marissa Potter, who is, is managing our brand partnerships and sponsorships. So she's going out to, to organizations and asking for sponsorship dollars, asking if they want to um, co-brand an event with us, things like that. Um, Ravi Rao is our video editor. He's the one who puts together all the incredible video work that you'll see um, on our social media channels. Um, Lizzie, uh, Lizzie Michael is the one who's managing our fellowship program. Um, and then we have two people, Sakshi Singh and Madhu Ganda Singh, who are also helping her with that. So we've all kind of tackled a different part of the process. Um, I've historically been the person who has continued, uh, the athlete reach outs and the actual interviews themselves. But whenever any of my teammates have availability, they love to hop on the line and actually chat with the athletes too. Yes. Wow. This is just huge. This is, this is definitely a movement. Hmm. That, sure. that is our goal. We it's, it's important to us that we want to build a community where women from all over the world feel like they can connect with other people who are passionate about sport. Like, like you said, Ruth, you don't even have to be an athlete. Our stories are not really about sport. They're about resilience. Mm -hmm. They're about, right. They're about having a commitment to something greater than yourself. And I think that we are building that um, slowly, but surely, and we're definitely gaining momentum. Yes. I, I'll say, and I'll say, and I'm already tinkling my head how we can support this effort as well, because this is huge and it's very, very important as Ruth pointed out. I mean, women all over the world need to know they have a voice and they can be whatever they want to be, mm -hmm. no matter what. Totally. And this is a generational gift that will live 
longer than these athletes. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things about digitalizing experiences, they're always there. So true. It's really true. And it, what's cool about it too is, you know, we're, we're doing follow-ups with, with Nikki. So our first spotlight on Nikki was in the fall of 2020. So before, to, before the COVID pandemic, we had no idea what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the world was in a very different place and, and that's archived. And you can go back and listen to Nikki's story. And then we're launching Nikki's follow-up story next week. So you can kind of follow these athletes along their journey and see what's changed for them, what stayed the same and, and what's going on in their world. It's not just kind of a one and done situation, though that's fine too, but it's also, it's also you can see the evolution of, of who they are and what they're, what they're facing and dealing with. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's really huge. Um, and what I love about it is it's going to capture these stories in context. It's not going to be an interview with them 20 years down the road. You know, you're going to be able to see them in context. Like you said, you're doing the follow-up for Nikki. Mm -hmm. That's being released. So we're going to see how it affected her. Can't wait to hear how it affected the pandemic. Yes. Her. We know how it did in one way. That was what just had to be heartbreaking. I mean, I know she was happy for her teammates and all of that, but that had to be heartbreaking yes a once in a lifetime experience gone so it'll be interesting to see how she came out of that where she is with that now and what, and what days does your podcast air and time sure so we launch um every other wednesday at 5 a.m eastern standard time okay every other wednesday at 10 Oh, sorry, 5 a.m. So bright and early. Oh, uh, okay. Get the, get the early risers. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Good idea, 5 a.m. Eastern. Correct. Okay, and how can people reach out to you if they want to support? I would love, love, love to hear from anyone who is, who this message resonates with. Um, I, you can go to our website. There's an email submission form. If you want to just get to me directly, message me on LinkedIn, uh, message me on Instagram. My name is Jamie Middleman, M-I-T-T-E-L-M-A-N. Everyone gets that wrong. So it's kind of Mattel man. <laughs> um, <laughs> would love to hear from you. We're actively looking to build our community, um, whether you're in the sports space, whether you're in the media space, whether you have no connection to either of those worlds, but you just say, hey, I like what Jamie is doing. I love what the team's doing and I want to get involved with some way. I would love to speak with you because I guarantee that there's a way that you can be a part of the movement. Yes. Yes. Wow. We're definitely going to have to do this again mm -hmm. because we want to follow up with you in terms of where you're going. And we're definitely going to be talking to you about how we can support the movement as well because this is just I haven't interviewed anything like this this year so wow. thank you for the exposure to this uh God works in mysterious ways yeah this is huge I I just love what you're doing I love the name of it too yeah. you know we know that it, that's part of the Olympics and all of that but it means so much more it's a perfect name it is the perfect name for what you're doing thank you it's it um thanks for picking up on that too Ruth um I sometimes feel like I noodle over these things that no one even pays attention to so I appreciate you you noticing the idea to be explicit is is obviously the Olympic and Paralympic torch but then beyond that that every woman that we interview and everyone in our community can be a bearer of whatever it is that is most important to them. If they're talking about equal pay, if they're talking about racial justice, if they're talking about motherhood, the idea or the concept is, is that we can all be flame bearers for whatever it is that we are most passionate about in our lives. Yes, yes. And again, how can people reach out to you? Um, I would love to hear from people um, on LinkedIn from... So LinkedIn message me or reach out to me on Instagram, Jamie Middleman. You can also reach out to us on our website, flamebears.com. We have a um, 
a, a way to sign up for our mailing list, then we can be in touch there. Oh, okay. Wow, Jamie. Thank you so much for gracing our stage with this important information. Mm -hmm. And I know that everybody that who's going to hear this or see this is going to want to be a part because this is amazing work that you're doing, important work, and it is going to, it's just bigger than all of us. It's bigger than all of us. So thank you for all that you do. And we can't wait for you to come back with the updates. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you both for your time, for having me. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and it's it's been an honor to speak with you. It's been a pleasure to you. Likewise. Thank you so much.